Hello everyone and welcome to this Biology Mind A-level tutorial on protein structures in which we'll be having a look at globular and fibrous proteins. Okay, so our key learning objectives for today are to have a look at the structure and function of globular proteins. Number two, haemoglobin is an example of a globular protein. Number three, the structure and function of fibrous proteins. And number four, collagen as an example of a fibrous protein. Now, 3D proteins are proteins with tertiary and quaternary structures. They can be classified into either number one, globular proteins, or number two, fibrous proteins. So let's start off with globular proteins. So globular proteins are round structures. The hydrophobic parts of the protein fold inwards, so they're on the inside. They're all burrowed in here and while the hydrophilic parts are arranged around the external surface. Now remember, hydrophilic, hydro comes from the Greek for water, philic from the Greek for love. So water loving parts on the outside, water phobic is from the Greek for hate, so water hating parts are folded inside. So this means that because the hydrophilic parts are arranged on the outside of the globular protein, these proteins tend to be quite soluble in water. So as a result of this, they play a wide variety of vital metabolic roles in the human body. So it's because of their nice round shape and their solubility. So for example, they form enzymes, transport proteins and messenger proteins. So all enzymes are globular proteins. So enzymes are a really good example to use if you want to talk about globular proteins and their round shape can be altered appropriately to fit their target sites with high specificity. So examples include digestive enzymes such as amylase, pepsin and lipase. So transport proteins are also globular proteins because they are soluble. So this allows them to cross cell membranes. So for example, haemoglobin, which transports oxygen, is a globular protein. So let's have a look at messenger proteins as well. So the solubility of globular proteins also makes them really good as messenger proteins. So these proteins are otherwise known as hormones and they regulate the body's metabolic processes. An example of that is insulin which regulates blood sugar levels. So let's have a closer look at haemoglobin now as an example of a globular protein. So haemoglobin is a quaternary protein now remember we met quaternary proteins in our last tutorial, so if you think you need a recap of that then go back and watch the tutorial before this. And it's made up of four tertiary globular subunits. So these four tertiary globular subunits are interacting here to form our quaternary structure. Two of these subunits consist of alpha chains while the other two contain beta chains. Each globular subunit is covalently bonded to heme. So heme is not a protein, it's therefore called a prosthetic group. Heme contains iron, which is what oxygen binds to. So haemoglobin is actually considered a conjugated protein because it's a protein that is associated with non-protein structures. Okay, so we've had a look at globular proteins. Let's, let's now move on to have a look at fibrous proteins. So fibrous proteins are long chains. They are made up of long polypeptide chains that twist together, as you can see in this diagram here. And they're water insoluble because the hydrophobic parts are not folded away. Now, remember, we said that the hydrophobic parts in globular proteins are folded away on the inside of the protein, whereas the hydrophilic parts on the outside, which is why it's nice and soluble and water loving. But here, the hydrophilic parts are, are, not, are not on the outside. Or, if you want to phrase it in a different way, there's lots of hydrophobic parts on the outside, which means that these molecules are not very water soluble, because remember, our hydrophobic parts are our water hating parts. But as a result of this, fibrous proteins do not function well as metabolic proteins. They're better as structural proteins. And remember, that's because they're not very soluble, so they're not very good to use as metabolic proteins. They wouldn't be able to pass through cell membranes, for example. So examples of fibrous proteins include keratin and collagen. So keratin provides structure to hair and nails. Collagen is a type of connective tissue found in the body. Okay, so let's come and have a look at a specific example of a fibrous protein. So collagen is a strong protein because it has strong bonds such as covalent bonds. It also has hydrogen bonds, which are a bit weaker than covalent bonds, a lot weaker than covalent bonds. Collagen is present in the body as fibres, 
which are many collagen fibrils folded around each other. So like this. Different types of collagen can be found almost everywhere in the body, such as in the skin, the muscles and the bones. So that's us covered. We've done globular proteins and fibrous proteins, and we've had a look at two examples for that. So haemoglobin is a globular protein and collagen is a fibrous protein. So I hope that all made sense and I'll see you for the next tutorial.